Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another weekly Wednesday live stream. I'm Peter. I'm Emil. I, I need to get your name right this time. I, I last while well, we were practicing <laughs> earlier on, I said Michiel. Yeah. Something in my close head. enough, close enough. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's uh, yeah. Um, Emil is not our new colleague, by the way, because I know some of you guys, we, we've shared this before on live stream, we're looking for somebody still to uh, replace Ja, of course. Uh, but uh, no, Emil is here at our, uh, at our invitation. Uh, he's here as our resident uh, expert, for this live stream at least, uh, on the topic that we have today, which is... Building to the <laughs> This thing. <laughs> yes. Well, it, it, it is hefty. I mean, it's uh, it's a nice machine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is the P100X, and uh, if you know uh, our lineup, you this machine will not be new to you. Uh, we have had uh, P100X models in the past, but this is with the uh, latest 12th gen Intel uh, processors and chipset, which we'll get into a little bit later as well. But yeah, it's all about this uh, uh, machine today and that monitor as well, which again, we'll also pray. Um, I, I love that you guys think that he's my brother. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I get it. We both have like similar style glasses a little bit, you know, the, the yeah, anyway. Um, but no, it's, no. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we've done a DNA test and, uh, and, and the result was, uh, nah, no. Unfortunately, nah. unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Would have been cool though, to, to find <laughs> out like, all right, you're my brother. <laughs> Makes for good TV, I guess. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, this is what this live stream is about. It's, of course, called Building Game Worlds. And so some of you guys already said, let's get building. Well, Emil is somebody who actually does build game worlds. So, Emil, if you want, uh, okay. tell the audience a little bit about yeah. who you are and what you do. Okay, so as you can see at the little bottom here, there's my name, Emil Sligas. Yes. Um, my official title is a lead tree environment artist, but it's just like a fancy way of saying that I built the worlds that you can see in like the very big video games. Um, I've been doing this for eight years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I have worked for some companies that you probably know, like Ubisoft, where I worked on games like The Division 2, uh, all of its DLC and some unannounced titles. And hmm. I also worked at Playground Games, where I worked on the Forza Horizon games. And uh, currently I'm running my own company where I basically work together with people like MSI, uh, NVIDIA, Adobe, yeah. just like a bunch of those more bigger companies just making cool art. Sometimes it's uh, just to show off, for example, new hardware, like advertisements, stuff like that. Or sometimes it's just going back to basics and actually building the worlds together. Yeah. So it's, it's safe to say, I mean, you, you've named a couple of names there really quickly. Uh, not small names either, both in games, but also in, in uh, companies that you work with. Uh, Merrick, uh, Emil is working for MSI right now, yes. But he's only here, I mean, he's uh, uh, independent. He's, he's got his own company, basically. Um, and it, we only hired him uh, to come by in this live stream, indeed, to borrow his expertise. And basically, I mean, we know a lot about the hardware that's what it comes down to right but i'm not a creator uh, i do create some stuff but not nearly as much or as awesome mm -hmm. stuff as he does so we wanted to have somebody here who actually knows something about when you use these machines to create uh you know things like 3d models textures actual full game worlds in uh, unreal engine and stuff like that that's the stuff that, that emil does yeah um so yeah we wanted something that's like way beyond what we understand or, or are capable of doing and somebody that can actually do that and show that uh, later on this live stream he will also show indeed uh, some demonstrations about how he actually uses that yeah, definitely. And I'm like the opposite. I, I know barely anything about the hardware. Sure, I know a bit about the graphics cards and everything, but all I care about is what I can do with the hardware and if it actually allows me to work at like a fast pace. Yeah. And uh, of course, yeah. at high quality. Yeah, and I mean, in your again, you know, most of our uh, most of our content is about gamers and gaming and, and the gaming hardware. So uh, I, I assume also you know, most guys in the chat, you're probably uh, you know mostly g game uh, fans of gaming and, and games and stuff. Uh, hardware fans as well, but I'm not sure how many of you guys, and it would be cool if some of you guys are actually content creators, you know, if you do things like photography, uh, video uh, rendering or, or 3D rendering or anything like that yourself, let us know, because then maybe you'll have some, uh, some pointed questions for uh, Emil later on. Um, Mm -hmm. But indeed, so if you if you actually do make this content, um, you know, and if you it, basically 
this is time is money right it's yeah. very simple and and the longer you have to wait for a render to complete or anything else to, to do your work to finish something that's just wasting time and money in your yeah case. definitely just yeah. think about the big companies when you hear those things about oh this game has a 500 million dollar budget <laughs> yeah now imagine uh, having 100 employees and every employee needs to waste yeah. half an hour a day just waiting for stuff that's yeah. Yeah. That ranks up after a few years of development. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. So indeed. So the faster you can you can create stuff, you can render stuff. That that helps. It just yeah ups your productivity. Uh, yeah, definitely. And of course, it shouldn't crash because crashing is like a mortal sin. I think in your oh, yeah. profession, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because you always forget to turn on autosave. So yes. when you crash, your work is gone, and we all know what it's like if you need to redo the exact same thing again or multiple times it's just uh you can I, see you can see how that i have really bad <laughs> I, I, I know i know a lot of uh, uh companies who who you know put glass windows in buildings for a living who i think made a good living out of crashing hardware because then people tend to throw stuff out the window <laughs> or yeah, you know anyway uh but yeah that's something that's really important so it has to be fast but it also has to be very uh um, dependable that it, it keeps working doesn't crash very uh, stable reliable uh but also i mean it should be durable as in you know i don't know you, you buy this thing not to use it for a couple of weeks right it should work for however long you you should be uh, yeah, using it especially with the higher end pcs like when you buy it you expect to get at least yes. a few years out of it yeah. although the industry is moving really fast. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing as well, right? You you probably always making the the calculation in your head, like, okay, so what if I buy the latest uh, processor or, or a system with the, the highest specs? Because then you'll you'll save time. Yes, it'll cost money. It's an investment, but it'll also save you time. So. Eh. You know? Yeah, definitely. So that's always uh, uh, something to, to think about. The uh, PC specs, by the way, are uh, right here at the bottom. Uh, there's a rotating uh, GIF. Uh, and that, that are, those are the specs of this specific model. Uh, we have different models as well. I'll, I'll give you a bit of an overview later on in the uh, stream to show you what kind of models are available. And there's even a, a price indication. It is for Europe, but still. Um, so yeah, because we always know that people are always asking for it. Uh, how about the case? Is it good? Depends on what you mean. Um, it looks good. It, it looks good. <laughs> it, it, I mean, in cooling performance, well, you'll have to wait and see because you're going to have a live demo, uh, but I can already spoil it for you. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> hello, my internet sucks. Well, it's sad to hear. I uh, hope, hope it improves soon, I guess. No RGB? Well, not yet because it's not turned on, but <laughs> give us a sec. Um, all right. Um, yeah, guys, so uh, today I'll, I'll get on with the uh, giveaway first uh, because today we are actually giving away quite a few game codes for uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. And actually, uh, sadly, that, uh, the mo that, monitor, that huge monitor there is covering uh, the visual. Um, but that shouldn't spoil the fun. So yeah. uh, I hope that the, uh, our bot is already um, spamming in the chat uh, the link to the giveaway. If not, let us know, uh, because I'm going to see if I can join the chat as well. And um, nice. see if we can share that link maybe uh, ourselves. Yeah, I'm I loving Rainbow Six. I don't see it yet. It's a difficult yeah. game, but it's a really fun game. <laughs> We've, uh, holy crap, what's happening there? <laughs> oh. uh, my screen was just going all over the place. Anyway. <laughs> um, Here's the page, and I'll make sure to uh, type the chat, or sorry, the yeah, the uh, the link to the giveaway. Uh, link to give away. And uh, just to be sure, guys, it's usually posted. I mean, we're we're live streaming uh, as usual on uh, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook, but because of the uh, content that we have here, and it's more professional based as well, we're also uh, live streaming on LinkedIn, believe it or not, um, mm -hmm. and on our MSI Global YouTube channel at the same time, which is more geared towards this kind of uh, product and audience. Um, so yeah, I've, I've just shared the giveaway uh, link in the chat as well. But you can also always uh, go to msi.com slash two slash insider, and that should work as well. Um, let's see if we already have a couple of entries. 
Yeah, wow, that's a lot actually. Okay, so it seems like most of you guys don't have a problem uh, looking for uh, looking hmm. for the uh, or sorry finding the the link or you know where to find it. So nice. I will uh, draw the first couple of winners. Okay, who do we have? Uh, well, we're going to see. Actually, whoa! I see that we made a mistake in the uh, settings of the giveaway. I'm not sure if I can change that because it seems like we didn't specify that there were uh, more winners than usually uh, in this case. Okay. I think let's just. Uh, is that right? Actually, more. I think. Yeah, it's more. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I fixed it now. Or is it? Yeah. Anyway. Um, I'll see. I hope, I hope this goes well. Ah, more witness is always good. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> just need the platform to accept the higher number of winners. I, I, I'm sure you guys don't mind, right? <laughs> <laughs> the first four winners. Yeah, actually, indeed, uh, I, I was going. No, actually, yeah, I was going for more than four. But. Uh, oh, it's Rainbow Six, so six winners, I would say. That's, 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 that's feels very that feels nice. accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Just came up with one. <laughs> I wish that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, yeah, okay. Let's, uh, let's do that. So, six winners. Um, draw winners. All right. Um, and... We will start doing that, and the system takes a little while. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, we have our first couple of winners. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention, but if you uh, are a regular viewer and you participate regularly in our giveaways, you can uh, claim a loyalty bonus, meaning you can add additional points into the total, which just uh, yeah basically increases your chances of winning. And I see a lot of winners now that have claimed their loyalty bonus, so. That nice. just goes to say. Uh, the first one is called Indo Pride. Congratulations. Uh, second winner is called Enteng. Third winner is called Kush. Uh, the fourth winner is called Arceonix. Arceonix? I hope I'm pronouncing that, pronouncing that right. Uh, hmm. The uh, fifth winner is called Shikes. And the uh, uh, sixth winner is called Lucky971. So congratulations to our first six winners. We're going to send the codes out to you as soon as possible after the live stream. Mm. And uh, yeah, more codes to be won later on this live stream. So uh, awesome. if you still want a, pl a chance to win, don't, don't go away. Keep watching. Um, all right then. If I won, can you send it to India? Well, it's it's a, a digital uh, uh, game key, so yeah, uh, we can we can send it indeed. Wherever you are. Yes. Although I'm sure there are some countries excluded, but for the rest, wherever you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I see. By the way, uh, an interesting question. Maybe you can already talk. About, do you prefer building landscape or landscapes or characters? Because you, you oh. do do both, right? No, to no. A degree. I'm solely landscapes. Ah, okay. So Maybe. characters is a whole other profession. I don't know how they do it. Hmm. It's amazing work. I cannot do it. <laughs> not, no. not even close. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. But yeah, landscapes are my thing. Yeah. I, li I like my tables. I like my train. Yeah. I like my... Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, okay. So I think then, guys, I am going to talk a little bit about <laughs> this beast on the desk. And I'm going to need to have some slides to help with that. So here we go. Uh, so this is the uh, Creator P100 series, in this case specifically the P100X. Uh, there are uh, also, for example, the P100A, and I'll explain the difference a bit later in the overview. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about, well, what is this thing used for? Basically, anything and everything. I mean, you can even game on it, but it is more geared towards the content creators. Uh, but really, it's just, it's very high-end uh, hardware, and it's geared towards uh, creative use. Now. Uh, this is, as I mentioned, uh, features the 12th gen, uh, so the latest Intel uh, core generation. That means it's a l even a lot faster, especially compared to the, the previous few generations, 11th gen, it's quite a bit faster. So as you can see here, there's Puget Bench, which is also, again, more geared toward uh, content creators. And you can see just from uh, the 11th gen generation to the 12th gen generation in this, within the same chip, basically, or the same level of chip, the, both are i7s. 
Um, you can see that there is on average a uh, yeah, 20, it jumps around a bit, but 20 to uh, even in uh, Cinema 4D, there is a th over 30% performance boost, just one generation to the next. So there you go, big, big difference. Um, of course, it features the latest RTX uh, graphics card, so RTX 30 series, with, of course, the RTX Studio driver. So most of you will probably be familiar with the game-ready drivers from that NVIDIA makes. Those are, of course, optimized for gaming and uh, to make sure that the games run as stable as possible. Uh, the studio drivers are really optimized to make, uh, to, to, you know, with some tweaks included to make sure that the, uh, for example, rendering process is going as smoothly and optimized as possible. Again, this saves time and it prevents unnecessary things like crashing. Um, the cooling, well, we've mentioned a little bit before. Uh, what this does is, if you've seen live streams about our other uh, pre-built desktops, this will be a familiar concept. Uh, it's basically something like silent storm cooling, uh, but basically what it means is that for uh, the three basic components that uh, produce the most heat, uh, they have their own basically yeah, cordoned off room or area within the case. This means that uh, hot air from the GPU, if, if the GPU heats up, it will not mix in uh, or influence the temperature of the CPU, which is within uh, most normal uh, cases, what you'll have is one big open space and everything is in there. So meaning if only one component gets hot, the whole air in the ambient temperature in the case rises. Uh, by uh, secluding them and uh, giving them each their own space with airflow, obviously, and the, uh, uh, enough space to uh, get rid of the heat, enough vents, um, that way you can really, uh, yeah, make sure that they don't influence each other and don't amplify a problem, for example. So, um, yeah, I'll show you that later on as well because I'm going to open this case up a bit before we uh, get started. Um, maybe uh, an afterthought, but still, Wi-Fi 6E, which is nice if you're having to move around a lot, if you're not a big fan of cables. Uh, so it has the latest standard in, uh, in Wi-Fi or it supports it. Um, also, it has a 2.5 gig LAN port, which means you have really fast uh, networking. If you're, if you're working from or want to save your projects on a, a local network drive, a NAS drive, uh, it makes a big difference whether you have a, a 1 gig uh, uh, connection or a 2.5 gig, uh, because you just, you're just you able to uh, uh, put the files away much faster. And I mean, especially when, when doing this kind of content credit, you're going to see later on, but I've seen you do files of, uh, what is it, 30 gigs or something? Yeah, or when, when they asked me bring a few projects, I came yeah. here with around 400 gigs of when that was only like three projects. Yes. So it just it adds it adds up really really fast. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I think goes the same thing goes I think for video editing because you're working with a lot of uh, very uh, high res uh, source files and then you're going to be editing them. So yeah, this makes a big difference. Uh, also important again, this is uh, more geared towards you know you have your own company. So what you want to make sure is that things are safe. And by safe, I also mean like encrypted in this case. So you. Uh, it has a hardware two, TPM 2.0 uh, module, of course, included, uh, which isn't only this became very big and popular. People became aware of it when uh, Windows 11 came out because it was suddenly a requirement to run uh, Windows 11. Oh. But uh, it's also important to run other uh, uh, yeah, security programs or encryption programs like BitLocker, uh, which just help you to you know, secure your work and prevent uh, things like cyber attacks. So it's, uh, in general, it's, it's just good to have. Um, yeah, this also features a, a what we call easily upgradable design, and I think this is also a theme that we've, we see with many of our desktops, that even though it's a, uh, well, seemingly custom form factor, and it kind of is, uh, but it still uses a lot of uh, accessible and, and standard size components. Um, I can show you that a little bit. Uh, let's see, go to the main cam because I've got my trusty screwdriver, and Eric's not here, so that means that this hardware should be relatively safe. <laughs> Uh, we say that because Eric has a reputation for if he does a teardown or any kind of um, uh, opening of hardware, that uh, th there is a mm. fair chance that the hardware doesn't survive. So well, please don't break it because I still need to use it for my part. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I my track record is uh, so far zero. I've, I have zero uh, things that actually uh, didn't start. I mean, that's not to say that it cannot happen, but yeah, it's uh, it's yet to happen for me. <laughs> And I hope I didn't just jinx it, guys. But if I did, hey, it's on camera. So that's always nice. <laughs> yeah, it will never go away. It's nope. the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. It's, it's only <laughs> on the internet. 
Uh, all right, so yeah, basically what I'm doing is just um, removing a couple of screws on the back side, and that should allow me to uh, remove pretty much all of the panels and have access to almost everything. <coughs> Here we go. So now uh, what I'll do is I need to remove the uh, the front, or oh, sorry, the uh, top panel, which houses the just the power button, which is there. And I do that just by sliding it back. Or that should work, there we go. And it just lifts off, lifts free, like that. But as you can see, there's a lot of, um, yeah, I can hold it like that. There's, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, vent uh, space at the top, basically, so all the hot air can just move out. Uh, and at the top, I mean, there you have the graphics card already, uh, which is vertically mounted. But w now that this top part is off, uh, I can also just basically lift off the sides just as easy as that so here you see the graphics card this is a rdx 3090 ventus uh, ventus 3x model obviously for those of you who know our uh, lineup so this is the ventus uh, version you also see the power supply here this is an sfx um, version which stands for small form factor because it is uh, you know if you have a normal atx it will be a bit wider but in this case it has to be a little bit slimmer because of the form factor but still, you can still upgrade these uh, if you so choose. If you in the future want to have an even more powerful one, um, yeah, you can you can upgrade that. It's kind of modular. And of course the motherboard, but this is the back side of the motherboard. So I'll show you the other side as well. I love how compact it is. It is, yeah. It's like it's almost like a bit of art in, in, the, in of itself. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it looks kind of unassuming as well. I mean, it yeah. doesn't, if, if you say like this is a, uh, you know, almost top of the line hardware. It's an i7, uh, so it's not an i9, but still, uh, i7 12700K uh, uh, with a, an RDX 3090, right? This isn't the thing that you then imagine because you think like, oh, it must be a big bulky thing, uh, but not quite. So here we have the other side. Uh, here there are two cages for SSDs basically, or hard drives, uh, two and a half inch um, cages. Uh, one is inhabited by uh, a two terabyte uh, hard drive, HDD, so it is a mechanical hard drive in this case. Uh, the other one is empty, so it's still you, you can use that to upgrade uh, your storage uh, to add, for example, a, a, an SSD, a SATA SSD or other uh, storage. Uh, there's the fan here. This is the CPU cooler. Um, and uh, this is the other side of the power supply, obviously. Now, um, under here, which I cannot show you, unfortunately, without having to remove a lot of stuff. And again, we, we want to show you this thing in action as well, so we're not going to do that right now. But uh, under here are the um, memory, uh, the RAM memory uh, slots and uh, the module. So there's uh, two times 32 gigs of DDR5 in this, which is really fast. And uh, also, I think uh, to to access the uh, M.2 slots, and I think there are two of those on this uh, specific uh, model. Uh, you would also have to remove the CPU cooler and then uh, under there on the motherboard you will uh, see the M.2 slots. Uh, actually, that's not true because I can see one that's uninhabited on the back of the motherboard here. And I should have seen that coming. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to see and I, unfortunately uh, our close-up camera doesn't work. Uh, neither does the droid cam, so we're going to have to work on that a little bit. But uh, here this little slot here, I hope this, this is visible for you guys, but this is an M.2 um, slot basically, so you can you can just put one in here. There's also the little screw here basically to clamp it down. The only thing you don't have here is space for a heatsink, but that's usually, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, now this is a uh, 12700K. Uh, and this is the P100X, and that basically means that it's built on the Intel Z690 platform. So that also means that the uh, PCIe, uh, sorry, the M.2 slot is uh, supports Gen 4, so that's really fast uh, storage, obviously. But also that's why uh, I mentioned it has uh, DDR5 memory and not DDR4. Um, because we do also have uh, the P100A models and they have, you're going to see this later in the overview as well, <coughs> I have some examples of the models that we have at least in Europe, uh, but they are built on the B660 platform. So that means uh, uh, Gen 3 uh, SSDs or M.2 SSDs and uh, DDR4, uh, yeah, DDR4 memory. But still, that's also uh, really, really fast and uh, quite capable. So that's just wanted to give you a small overview. I mean, this is uh, like, uh, you know, if you want to show the, the bare bones of it. 
and it's still quite sturdy. I mean, I've, I've just taken the sides off, but I mean, there's nothing in there that can come loose, right? It's just yeah. uh, very compact and sturdy bit built. Yeah, it's the first time that I see it from the inside. Yeah, and even yeah, though I, I don't know a lot about before. hardware, I really, yeah, I like. It's a neat the look uh, of it, yeah. Neat package. Yeah, exactly. Like I like when everything is just nice and clean. Like you won't, you do not want to see my desktop. No, <laughs> it's uh, it's all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if it does the job, that's for most people. That's uh, that's enough. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna put it back together a little bit, and then once I finish that, uh, I also left the uh, uh, the protective foil on it, so we can actually do some peeling, which I know you you all like. We've yeah. actually done, I, I, I'm sure you, you don't know this, but we've actually done a stream and it was kind of creepy, but do you know the term ASMR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> we, we did an ASMR live stream and uh, it was funny as hell. <laughs> of had, the peeling stuff. Oh. Yeah, and we had, I mean, Eric was the person doing it together with uh, Michiel, the other colleague I mentioned. And Eric is known for, you know, he, he usually just, his normal voice volume is already quite loud. So to make him do you know a whispering live stream because that's what you do on asmr <laughs> that was funny man because it goes against his nature right it's like he's yeah, it's he normal normally just... today we are yeah. looking for a desktop yeah yeah exactly yeah i'm not I sure don't know, i don't know guys... if it came across but like yeah, yeah. i don't know if, if you guys are still having like therapy sessions or something to get over it because it was uh, <laughs> it was it was cringe as hell but you know it was funny to do um Let's see. You okay there? <laughs> yeah, I just have to find the right. There we go. It, it choose, it's not that hard actually, but it's just a matter of just aligning everything correctly, and then uh, it's actually quite easy. Just gonna put the screws back in. Well, we got time. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Front panel ports. Oh, uh, yeah. I can uh, I can tell you guys that as well. Uh, but actually, uh, speaking about that. I think I could be wrong about this because this is not my product category usually, but there is no uh, front panel ports. No, oh, okay, yeah, it's like a side panel. All right, anyway, I'll show you guys in a minute. It looks like your co worker is in the chat and he doesn't like the chill gossip about him. <laughs> <laughs> don't gossip too much. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know, it's Eric indeed, so uh, don't worry about it. A hot top stream. Really? Don't For Electronica? I don't, I don't think those go together really yeah, well. <laughs> you, know, you never know, you never know. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge. Yeah, I like mean... A waterproof desktop, maybe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, don't, uh, don't, say, <laughs> don't say it's not possible, because we've, we've done some crazy stuff on the stream already in the past, but... Uh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay, so we're nearly done. Let's screw in there, and I can at least show you... Uh, I mean, again, we don't have a close camera, but here there are some, uh, some I.O. indeed. There is, of course, the uh, indicator light for the hard drive. Uh, there is a uh, uh, Type-C port, and I do think this is a display... I'm not sure. No, this, I think this is just USB. Uh, there are two more USB ports, and I, uh, one of them is, I think, uh, USB... Uh, 3.2 Gen 2, uh, and the other one is, uh, I think, uh, 3.2 Gen 1. And then there are two uh, audio jacks, so one for the microphone and one for a uh, headset. That's on the front, basically. Side panel ports, yeah. Um, and then on the back, of course, you've got the whole suite of, uh, yeah, of, of outputs. Of course, the graphics card, which is, again, it's just a, a regular 3090 uh, RDX. So you've got a triple display port and a single HDMI. And the other I.O. on the back, uh, you've got uh, three analog uh, audio outs. You've got two Wi-Fi uh, antennas, basically. So those are also in the box. Usually you can just screw them on and then you don't have to uh, worry about the cables too much. Uh, you've got two and a half gig LAN port. Uh, you've got in total, let's see, that's uh, six USB ports as well, of which two uh, are, uh, uh, this has to be then U USB 3.2 Gen 2, because it's 10, 10, gigabit, uh, 10 gigabits per second, I think. Or not gigabits, uh, uh, M megabit per second, I think. Is that right? That's, gigabits that's would be really yeah fast. exactly <laughs> so, uh, then it would be faster than the LAN port but it's still I think it's uh, it's really fast so that's uh, yeah uh, two of uh, I'm trying to get the versions right because I usually don't deal with that but it's USB 3.2 Gen 2 I think that's yeah. it but you've also got 3.2 
by two, and I think that's 20, so that's double the speed. Um, <laughs> and then there's four uh, ports here that are, uh, I believe, like regular, if you want to talk about that, but regular uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1, which I believe are five, uh, five um, meg megabit per second. So that's uh, also quite fast. And then, of course, you've got some display outputs here. But um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the CPU on this uh, on this bad boy doesn't have an iGPU. But I could be mistaken because I I was messing around with it in, in Afterburn and I did say GPU one and two, so it could actually have an, an integrated GPU. But anyway, probably you're not going to use that anyway. So best to just leave these dust covers in there um, and just plug it into the GPU because that's always going to be better in terms of performance. What is an environmental artist? Well, Spoof Pass, Emil is going to show you that in a minute. Yes, I will. Um, yeah, let's do some peeling. Um, do you want to do the honors? I mean, you're, you're a guest. We've done this a million times, so I want to okay. give you the opportunity. Which one first? Uh, up to you. The, the nice side one? A, yeah, there's a couple on the side. There's one on the front, on the foot. So. Oh, God. I'm going to mess this up. No, no, don't worry. Ready, guys? Did I mess it up? No, no, no I no, did no, not. No, that's perfect. Yeah, keep going, keep going. For yeah. some reason, yeah. I thought it was like an entire... Uh, oh, you could just, yeah, just put it on for you. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. There's another one. I'll do the small one. You can do this. <laughs> okay, it's not yeah, a it's, small... It's not kind a small of seeing where it goes, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just like a tiny bit, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, you can do the other. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> well done, well done. leave all the fun for you. I, are you sure you've never done this before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. so, you know, when, when you buy new hardware, this is part of the experience that you're just yeah. like, yep, this is shiny new, you know. It's oh, I completely. love it with phones. Yes. Like, yeah. uh, everything that's glass, if it has like a piece of plastic over it, it's perfect. Exactly. Um, let me see. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's the front. Nice. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I wonder if it translates as well on camera as it does for us, like just having that shine gun, it's like nice and... Nice and matte. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I hope you guys can see the same as we do. Well... Mm, aluminium look yep. on the bottom. Yep. But also matte, so it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I like it's it. Nice, nice look. Here we go. I honestly really like the look of this. I'm not just saying that because I'm on the MSI live stream, I honestly really do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not paying him to say that. No, no. no. <laughs> We told them to be okay. brutally honest. All opinions are my own. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Yeah, make sure we have the disclaimer up. Yeah. <laughs> ASMR, there we go. Put it back. Ah, sorry, man, I can't do that. <laughs> Real premium look to it. It is, and actually the build quality is as well. I mean, again, this is, it's really sturdy. Um, <laughs> so you don't really have to worry about anything also when transporting. Let me just grab the cable so we can start connecting this thing up. Um, here we go. So what we've done is there is a USB hub on the monitor and we're using that for the peripherals. So we only have to connect one uh, USB to the case itself. And then we have got one display so Emil can actually see on that monitor. And we've got one display, that's this one. So you guys can see because that's the capture. And I'm hoping that the capture will instantly pick up the signal uh, when we start it. But for now, we'll just fire it up. It's the first time I see it starting up. I wonder if it's like <laughs> nice and fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should be right. Ele Windows 11, so yeah. we're all on good hardware, so I expect like... Should be. Some yeah, it should be, should, be, should be quite fast. And also, um, I don't know who it was, but somebody was asking, no RGB. Actually, there is a little bit, but it's quite subtle. So there is a, a, just an edge of RGB lighting here, uh, like behind this uh, panel, basically. Yeah, it's too bad that we have two really big lights here that kind of like bleed We can out turn it, it off, we've done that sometimes, but I think, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Oh, it's already here. There you go, yeah. I, okay. That no. I don't know. Yeah, don't worry, I just I had to put uh, like some kind of uh, pin in there to start it. Anyway, uh, it's on now. Uh, but before we go to you, I mean, you, you can already get started if you want. Uh, oh, just no. start up a project and uh, see how that goes. And what I will do is I will continue with this a little bit. So. I showed you guys it's uh, quite easily upgradable. You can uh, access a lot of the components and uh, swap them out in the future if you want to within the uh, size constraints, obviously, that you have in this uh, in this case. 
Um, we also obviously have our MSI center, which has uh, a few really cool features that are mostly geared, uh, or especially geared towards the creative side as well. So you can pretty much, uh, yeah, there's also a lot of stuff just like what Nvidia has done uh, in optimizing the graphics card things with the drivers We've done that with trying for the whole system making sure that the, uh, you have a priority You can set priorities for uh, certain software like Adobe suite or um, uh, Render programs that they have first dibs on uh, certain uh, uh, resources like uh, RAM memory GPU CPU things. Uh, so that's really cool uh, and I promised you guys to uh, show you an overview of uh, some of the models that we have. And again, this is just an indication. Your region may differ, uh, both in what is available, but also the pricing. Um, and it's also, I mean, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but as you can see in the slide here, it's also available in black. So if you prefer black over white, you know, that's also available. And also it's matte black, so that's a pretty nice look to it. Uh, but here you can see some models here. Uh, and as you can see here also, the P100X is based on the Z690 platform. Uh, and it features, in this case, in, in all these models, it features an i7-12700K uh, processor. So you can do some overclocking if you want to, but mm, it's not going to make that much of a difference uh, in, in a system uh, like this as well. It's already plenty fast enough. Um, and it, it goes from a, a, the top model, a 3090, with uh, 64 gigs of DDR5, with a 2 terabyte Gen 4 M.2 SSD and a 2 terabyte HDD for a bit more mass storage. Uh, yeah, the MSRP is should be around about 5,000 uh, euros. Um, and it goes down to, in this case, uh, a 3060 Ti, uh, still with the i7, so same CPU. Uh, but then a 3060 Ti, uh, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, and uh, a one terabyte M.2 Gen 4 SSD, uh, and a one terabyte hard disk drive, and that will—that's well, about half, just a bit over half of the price of the top model. Um, so yeah, big difference. And then there are the P100A models, which from the outside look similar. They—they uh, they have a similar case and uh, basically look the same. But the big difference, uh, well, big, but the difference is on the inside. And uh, the difference is that uh, it's built on a B660 chipset, which means that uh, they don't support DDR5, but they support DDR4 uh, RAM memory modules. So uh, that's what the, one of the differences you will see in the price list as well, that you have uh, DDR4 memory. Still the capacity up to 64 gigs uh, or uh, 32 gigs. And uh, it supports uh, Gen 3 M.2 SSD, so not Gen 4. So I mean, it's still plenty of speed. Arguably, if you're loading things directly from the SSD, I mean, in, in the case that we're going to see later on as well, you will probably benefit from the higher speeds that Gen 4 offer. Uh, but it's mainly for, for loading and uh, uh, saving files. So once you've got everything up and running, you know, it's, it, should be, uh, it should be fine. But I mean, the price of those models is also quite a bit lower, even though the hardware, uh, other than the uh, motherboard and, and the DDR5 and stuff, isn't that much lower, uh, but I mean the um, that that one goes up to a 36, uh, 3070 RDX 3070 GPU and down to even a uh, 2060. So that's really for for things that probably require a bit less um, uh, graphics horsepower. Um, but yeah, depending on what you need, and that goes from uh, yeah about eighteen hundred euros uh, for the bottom model to and again this MSRP to about uh, 2700 uh, euros for the for the top end model yeah. with a 3070 and 36 gigs of ddr4 and a two terabyte gen 3 m.2 ssd can it run crisis remastered probably yes we're not going to test that today but yes <laughs> uh the black version looks slick yeah it does yeah. black and rgb are always faster yeah we all know everybody knows right rgb uh, when you add rgb to things it goes faster you get more fps that's uh, yeah, yeah. I'm more of a white color guy, so <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's why we offer the choice, right? We, some people like the, the lighter things a bit more. Some people like the darker. It's. Uh, I want to buy an Aegis Aegis Three. What do you think about it? Good choice, I guess. It depends <laughs> on your. <laughs> really depends on the configuration you're going for and what you're hoping it, it will be do it will achieve. But yeah, in general, it's a good choice. How long did you study before becoming a developer? I guess that one is for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm um, not a developer. So. <laughs> I think before I got my first job, I will say uh, three years. 
like spending every moment of your free time just trying to make art. All right. And then after three years, you can work in the game industry, hmm. pretty much. Wow. But uh, I will say I am a school dropout, so. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, but there are actually there are schools yeah. in the Netherlands. Not 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 a lot. Like it's quite a new industry. Yeah. But if you want to become a game artist or programmer or anything in the game industry, uh, there's like three or four really good schools, I believe. Hmm. So. Uh, yeah, to become an industry, right? I, I remember when I was uh, when I was in school, indeed. And this is, I mean, I'm not that old, but still. And I also, I was always into gaming, and I wanted to do something with it, but didn't know quite what. And I, I'm not, you know, I'm not creative like you in, in that way. I didn't know how to do that kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm not a programmer or something. So then it becomes difficult, right? Because then it's like, yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, but I also like I started out as a programmer because I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm, because I, I think I started learning at like 15 or 16 years old. So at that age, you just like, okay, I like games, what do I do? Well, the first thing you think about is, well, programming, because like you yeah. want to make your character move and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But um, at that point, if anyone here wants to do it, you slowly transition into whatever you like. Yeah. Like uh, if you try to make a game, you need to do a bit of everything. And then slowly it's like, oh, I really like that thing. That's the direction I go. Mm. But uh, it's an amazing industry. Mm. I recently read that we surpassed both the movie and music industry combined in terms of like mm. the net worth of the entire gaming industry wow. and stuff like that. All right. So well, uh, it's the place to be, everyone. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I, and he's been telling me as well, indeed, like he, he, he can't count the number of job offers he's, he's having to uh, uh, basically ignore. Oh, uh, we are streaming on LinkedIn here, so sorry, LinkedIn yeah, for yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, good, good, indeed. Ignoring. <laughs> well, well spotted, but yeah, indeed. So it's uh, <laughs> if you are inclined to join that industry, there is a big demand of uh, of artists, indeed, uh, who know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Once and you get your foot in the door, uh, I was going to say that. Well, as yeah. you mentioned, indeed, uh, uh, Emil also mentioned before, is like once. You, I mean, the start is difficult because you know you need to get noticed but once you've worked on one uh, big project man everybody's just ringing you up saying are you available can you can you, can you come help us out with the project so uh, yeah seems like a really good business yeah um, even you guys asked me if i wanted a job here yeah <laughs> just 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 before yeah, the stream yeah, but yeah, yeah. that was not, not an art job i think no 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 well kind of i mean you've done a project for us before right yeah yeah i did I'm yeah. actually looking at it right now. Yeah. Although I don't think they can see it yet. Not but, yet. Uh, no, 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 indeed. Uh, well, soon. Exactly. exactly. Soon. Talking about that, you have a, a monitor there, and I also want to cover that a little bit. Uh, so it's a black monitor. It's called the Summit MS321UP. Yeah. Oh, you can even from the side, you can see. Uh, yeah, let's go. do it from yeah. the side. It's, it's quite a big, <laughs> big one. <laughs> it's a bit hard to get it on camera. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, what I have here is also I've got some slides to, uh, to talk about it. Um, and it, it's actually a pretty cool monitor. Um, it has uh, really good I.O. as you can see, a lot of uh, things you can do with it. The most, one of the most uh, important things is it has its own uh, processor, which means it can, um, yeah, it can process and, and save certain things, like color profiles in this case. So in, if you're really working with uh, color accuracy with, with, for, for movies, for games as well, you told me you, you, you also want things to look perfect or a certain way. So you're always dealing with those kind of things. So once you've got things set in a profile that you like or that you think is right, you want to keep it that way. So that's one of the things you can do. Uh, also really cool, I think this, there's a, a live stream that uh, Ja has done in the past about this monitor specifically. So if you want to know more about it, you can look at that. But a KVM switch built in. And a KVM switch basically allows you to work for, from multiple desktops. So in this case, for example, I could connect both uh, this uh, desktop, so the P100X, and my laptop to it. And then without having to have either two monitors or uh, two sets of keyboards, I could just uh, switch the, the on the monitor, I can switch uh, to, from one system to the other. So it will display the other system, but it will also connect the peripherals to that other system. So that's oh, really cool. So I actually really like that. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't have to mess around with that. It saves time, I've not it seen saves that, space. Uh, I've not had a monitor like yeah. that does that before. And yeah. it's quite annoying, especially if you have more people yeah. that uh, work on the same stuff. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. So it's it's quite clever. And it's uh, I think it's it's very useful, in uh, at least in some scenarios, if you're working with multiple systems, then it's useful. Um, also, things like active noise cancellation. Again, it's just it's something that um, you know it can help uh, if you're in meetings or you have to take meetings in between, which I, I think you guys also constantly have to do. 
uh, talking to, uh, to to the rest of the dev team and stuff. Um, yeah, smart brightness, so it, it kind of tries to adapt. Again, this is trying to uh, reduce eye strain, of course, because you're, you're working long days uh, with this stuff, so if it kind of helps. Although you don't want it to change the color settings uh, while you're working on it, that's yeah, that, uh, probably but a bad idea. I, I already told you, when <laughs> I started in the industry, I did not have these glasses. Yeah. <laughs> now I cannot even read the screen that's in front of me with your chat yeah, uh, without yeah. it. So Exactly, so it does come with sacrifices, guys. Yeah, it's almost part of the job. Be <laughs> warned, be warned. Um, uh, yeah, things like screen assistant, so you can actually you can you know uh, divide things up into into uh, segments where you can kind of say okay I want this program to display in this segment and this there and this it's kind of like picture in picture. Speaking of which, you can also do that because if you're uh, if you have multiple sources connected and you kind of I don't know you want to keep an eye on a game or something or you want to allow a live preview because that's running on one <laughs> PC or whatever you want to do. Uh, but you have multiple feeds, you can actually do that on this monitor. So it can display multiple things at the same time, like a picture-in-picture. Picture. Uh, really cool. Uh, it has really good colors. Uh, we were looking at it earlier as well, and uh, they just, you know, they look really uh, vivid and, and rich, the colors, really saturated. Uh, very accurate, so 136% sRGB coverage, which is pretty much insane. <laughs> um, and 95% uh, DCI P3 uh, coverage so yeah that's that's really impressive that's really high uh, up there um, also as you can see uh, here but later on as well it has like this uh, magnetic hood that you can put on there if you have uh, oh you already have it there <laughs> haha yeah exactly I come prepared yeah. yeah although in this small screen would you? oh yeah wait I can uh, oh, okay uh, yes. I've never done this before but yeah, that's first time. like this yeah it's magnetic so just you just put it on there and oh, yeah. it kind of snaps into place there you go haha and so you kind of, that's how you can kind of eliminate. There's a lot of light in this room now in the studio. And I mean, I can already see at least the bottom half of the monitor is still kind of contaminated, if you will. Of course, there's a lot of reflection and yeah. uh, a lot of light there. But at the top already, the top half, it, it you already, you're kind of shielded mm -hmm. from a lot of the light around you and the reflections. But yeah, so now you can see me anymore. No. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then you can just as easily take it off again, because it's just, it's magnetic, yeah. so. Huh. Yeah, nice. And yeah, also, when you're used working in an office, because that's what you do in game industry, you often have like open platform offices with like 50, 60 people around you. Yeah. You always have those typical office lights, like the big <laughs> lights yeah. beaming down. Yeah. So, and uh, I can still remember at Ubisoft, we just had like big leaves, like plastic leaves. What, that really? We, yeah, because we don't, didn't have to huh? <laughs> block it. So we just literally put, like, for, we just went to IKEA, got like 50 of those really big green leaves, and so I kind of like put those over on one just to. That would look really cool. It's like a, a little uh, shack, you know? Yeah, yeah. Built. <laughs> it was fun. Okay, uh, right. sounds fun. Sounds like uh, cool if you look into the office, walk in there, and see like people having like their little banana shacks or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> A bit well, of an insight. <laughs> yeah, like what are you selling? Uh, yeah. Like a kiosk. Anyway, um, uh, ISO has the shroud for ages. I, I know, uh, yeah. uh, indeed. Uh, I, I used to work with or for, uh, I know people from ISO in, in the Netherlands as well. They're really good monitors indeed. Um, let's see. Play some game, dude. Well, well actually, we're not going to play a game, but we're going to, um, Emil is going to show you a little bit later on the, how he creates the game world and uh, how, how that influences uh, the, the hardware and how that helps. Um, yeah, again, this is a more like, uh, oh yeah, sorry, this is uh, a pre, the, the monitor is pre-calibrated actually from the factory. So this is also important. Um, and uh, with uh, so basically we guarantee a uniformity and a color accuracy of uh, yeah, a certain degree, meaning you always get a good calibrated monitor. Uh, also really handy if you're using, for example, uh, photography or something like that, is a built-in uh, SD card reader on the side. So again, you know, normally you'll have like a laptop or something that you have to do that, or even on your desktop, I know those iMacs they used to have that also in some cases. Uh, or you have to always take your dongle with you, you know, with a USB-C or something, and you plug it into there. In this case, it's already in the monitor. That's nice. Yeah. Like ah, here's it. the magnetic hood. Um, also, I think really important. Again, like you mentioned, you know, you've got you're working in long hours, so you can. Uh, it's important that you're able to. Uh, yeah, you can't rotate it, unfortunately, but it's no. more like indeed you can uh, uh, tilt it, height adjustment, and uh, swivel it a little bit. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. So there's there should be at least plenty of opportunity to get it in an in a ergonomic position that makes sense for you. Um, 
Yeah, and that's it. Basically, here's a basically a slide with all everything, but the text is too small, so uh, we're going to switch away from that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, nice. Time for another giveaway, I think. Let's do it. What do you guys think? Should we do it? Yeah. Another six for Rainbow Six. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, still, guys, you can still participate. We've uh, got more codes to give away today. Uh, you can participate by going to msi.com slash two slash insider, as you can see above Emil's head there a little bit, uh, or following the link in the chat. And uh, I will just share it again, just to be sure, because I'm not sure if the bot is working. It's been uh, uh, unreliable a little bit uh, in the past few live streams, and I don't want you guys to miss out. Um, if you're not seeing the link being shared, what you should do is go to either our YouTube or our Twitch channel because there it's, uh, yeah, it's always being shared. The other platforms usually don't like sharing URLs, so that's why they, pro they usually block it. Um, link to give away. Yes, there we go. So I've shared it again for you guys. Um, there's a nice one. Creating the game world will probably take more computer horsepower to do than actually playing the game. Definitely. This is the guy who could tell you all about that. I've, I've been picking his brain about it since yesterday as well. And it's sad that we didn't have that much time because the, you know, the wealth of knowledge that you have, that you know, we're only just scraping the surface. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's really cool to see things from, from that other viewpoint. And that's exactly why we, uh, we invited Emil here. So we could get, um, yeah, really get the information from the other point of view for once. Because again, also usually I'm seeing things from, from the game standpoint. And that's really interesting because you also mentioned to me, we're going to look at a few examples in a moment. Um, and, and I mean, there is an FPS counter there. And, and we, we, I think we do have a, a, a afterburn OSD, although we've noticed that in some cases it can crash out the uh, 3D engine. So bear with us uh, and we may have to omit that if if indeed it crashes uh, but you were also explaining to me that you know um, you've got uh, projects where you you create it indeed and you optimize everything for that those are actually in-game levels right because they have to be smooth you have to have decent fps so you're looking for a balance of still making it look really really good but making some sacrifices to make sure you don't get like dips in the FPS and it's still smooth sailing and you optimize a lot. You spend a lot of time doing that. But you also yeah. mentioned that you have levels that are like uncompromised and only for basically for the money shot. So they will be for uh, uh, record pre-recorded videos like, uh, you know, in-game footage, those videos. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but they are rendered and they, they're not rendered in real time. They're rendered you know, uh, uh, basically solely to produce that video or to produce a, an image like a wallpaper or like those mega big uh, printed posters or something like that, or those big uh, cloths you see at events, right? Those things that are, yeah, yeah, so I don't know. So for me, like I do make them in real time. Like I use Unreal Engine, which I'm sure many people have know or heard of. And yeah. else just think of Fortnite if you don't know it. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, for me, for those cases, it's important that I can navigate in real time yeah. without going too slow, but I do not need to run at 60 or 80 FPS. Like if I just want a pretty picture, I don't need that. No. And uh, if it's actually for games, then it's a whole another thing because don't forget that I'm not making games for these type of systems. No. I would be making games for everything from PS4, PS5 to every type of PC you can think of yeah. and try to make it run. Yeah. Well, all of them. And, and <laughs> relatively indeed. And then you have still, because that's also one of the things that blows my mind. Like it's already, that's already quite complex. You have to take into account kind of the, the, the specs of people that people can be running. And of course there's a bottom line, but still. But you also have like the different graphics settings or, or presets and, and you know, you kind of have to make sure that that's tested and then and, and everything runs at a certain level. So it's uh, it's very extensive work. And that's, that's how you get to, if you have a, a game development cycle, that's, it takes multiple years, and uh, there's a good reason for that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the 3090 should do the job. Yeah, it, it should. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, let's go to the winners. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see, because I asked the system to draw some winners, and I think, yeah, I think we have. Okay, so the first winner is just called Ja. Not like J-I-A, but J-A. Ja. So congratulations. <laughs> Don't worry, we, uh, we have your uh, data, so we're going to send out uh, the codes to you. Um, the second winner is called Tan. Third winner is called Rene. Fourth winner is called Aragon82. 
Uh, the fifth winner is called Call Me. I may. It depends if you left your number. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the sixth winner is called Spondiac. So congratulations mm -hmm. to all of you. And we're going to give yeah. away some more codes later I on. I like how we started stream. with really normal names and then we just went <laughs> back to internet. Oh man, this, <laughs> honestly, it, it, this, uh, we, we've got some really weird names sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's up to them. They can, uh, they can provide the name they, they like. Mm -hmm. so. um, all right. I awesome. think we can, uh, we can move mm -hmm. on to the next segment then, which means... Let's see if uh, if we can get a capture going. Ah, there we go. Yes. Aha. So this is what you are seeing on your screen. Yeah. So is okay. Emil working about a big project he can't talk about? Nah. Yes. Yes. yes no, no. But aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have projects I can talk about, but they're not like Ubisoft level big or something no, like that. Not so all it, of them. No. Yeah. It, Define I mean, big. <laughs> you can you can tell. I don't know if you said this in the introduction, but you can also say what what you do. Like if because you're not always working on on big projects and big games, right? You also have uh, tutorials and uh, right. trainings that you give, right? Yeah, definitely. So yeah. that might also be interesting. If after you see this and yeah. you find it interesting, um, I spent a lot of my time actually teaching people online, and uh, I don't know if how we can share a link but maybe at one point we can i can put it uh, in the description of the youtube video so if you're watching this video or, or uh, if you're watching the stream and you want to know then catch back uh, uh, yeah watch back later on youtube and it'll be in the description uh and if you're re-watching this video just scroll down a bit and it will be in the description yeah, there. So. so yeah so uh, it's just a lot of lesson of lessons and materials on how to become a game artist um, currently focusing on environments, which I do, but we are also going to focus on characters, if that's what you're interested in. Now, I should say that my content is a little bit more advanced, because, of course, creating, for example, the stuff that you see on your screen, you yeah. simply cannot do that in your first few months of it, being... It's not a really beginner uh, yeah. crash course that you're doing. But no. um, long live YouTube. Just like mm. I learned everything from YouTube eight years ago, you can learn even more, because back then it was even less big. So you can just go to YouTube for the basics. Um, look on my profile yeah. <laughs> again sponsoring it yeah. uh, just to see like the software that I use and stuff like that mm -hmm. but the key takeaway is Unreal Engine which and I think what you mentioned you know, you, you, you've been I, I guess just messing around in it because it's it's almost like playing I get in, in a yeah. way like you're, you're creating stuff I mean somebody just asked I think a pretty good question as well so what is it like starting from an empty canvas um, difficult but fun let me say, like, it's really, if you like it, yeah. you need to like this job. It's mm. not a job where, like in other jobs, like working in supermarkets, where mm. if you just push through, you can do it. No, yeah. you will not make it if you don't actually like doing it. Yeah. But uh, it's really fun. Like, uh, it might be frustrating at first because, of course, everyone has a tendency to compare to the AAA games, which mm. is a bit mean if you don't have a lot of experience. Yeah. But yeah. you can see yourself grow and it motivates you. And that's what I really love, just seeing myself grow and at one point you you create a piece of artwork and you're like whoa that actually looks the same as what i can see in yeah. the video games and yeah. then it's like you know what i'm ready let's get a job yeah and uh that it's a lifestyle almost hmm. uh, i would say like uh, it takes up such a big part just like any job yeah but um yeah it's one of those jobs where even off if you are away from the job you still look on for example there's a really big website called art station it's like our version of sharing artwork yeah you just look at other people's art and you help people out and it's like it's a big industry it's but a small kind of. small community yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. it's surprisingly small hmm. how many people well, so i mean but uh, just saying that right starting from empty cabins some people would get anxiety because it's like you know you get like a creative block i guess but if you have a i guess you need a vision i, I like the same uh, person also said do you draw your lay layouts on paper first or something but indeed i guess it starts with an idea or if you have like uh, a specific ex assignment you will probably get some uh you know a briefing or something saying i want something that that goes along these lines or you know you get some kind of direction that they kind of push you in but other than that yeah definitely and i would say like i can't even draw like i can draw a cube that's about it so uh, that's why I'm a realistic artist because mm. I like to look at the stuff away. Now, of course, this is not completely realistic, so I do imagine my own stuff a bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, for the rest, like, I don't draw everything out on the canvas. No. Uh, oh, I should really not move and talk at the same no, time worry, because man, I yeah. cannot uh, think about uh, it. WDK is also saying, uh, "Lol, CPU already 60, 60 degrees and not even doing anything," and I can literally hear the fans. Yeah, 
what you're hearing are the GPU fans. Uh, yeah. Because the graphics card is at 99% usage mm -hmm. consistently. As you can see, the, like the, the top uh, measurement there is the GPU, and that's mm -hmm. at about 80 degrees. Uh, and that's a triple fan card. So that's yeah. the, 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 the noise you're hearing. But as you can see, again, like yeah, the, the CPU is indeed not really doing much. And it's, uh, I mean, we're using yeah. the uh, uh, CPU, like the, the, the median um, uh, use yeah, statistic, I, I should, which doesn't say that much, but. Yeah, and I should tell them at this point, because you guys are all looking at this level. Yeah. This is not a game level. This is a level where I literally just threw as much as art as I want to it to yeah. make it look fancy. Yeah. So actually running it between 45, I actually, when I first came here, I expected like 24 to 30 FPS. Mm -mm. I'm so impressed because embarrassingly, my <laughs> home PC <laughs> runs it only at like 30 FPS max. Yeah. So I come here with a much smaller PC and yeah. at home I also have like a 3090. I don't know where my bottleneck is, but I'm just impressed yeah. that like this is good. 45 yeah. FPS in a game engine yeah. is different than 45 FPS in a game because games are compressed down, yeah. everything is optimized. A game engine is raw data. It's the same as when you w uh, have photographs and you work in raw. It's a uh, big file size, yeah. it's slow, yeah. and then you convert it to JPEG and yeah. then it becomes... Yeah, much faster, yeah. optimized, yeah, like you said, yeah. So there's a big difference between that. Um, and I mean, yes, we are giving this graphics card a workout, but I think that's the point, right? It's meant to be used and, and utilized. So that's why you'll see, indeed, it pretty much stays consistently at 99% usage. Yeah. Um, but and if you're, saying, if you're saying uh, 80, 80 degrees is pretty bad, no, it's not. Not if you're consistently stressing it um, like this. And also, it, it's not just... Um, the uh, the C uh, sorry the GPU itself, but also the memory. Uh, of course, the 3090 has a lot of VRAM, but uh, you know, in a, in a game engine like this, it uses, like Emil says, it uses a lot more than if you're actually just playing the game. So, this is just fine. Yeah, I actually I'm impressed, honestly. So, be, but it's maybe because I know my level, so I yeah. know the worst things of yeah. it. And, uh, yeah, and you know what, what, yeah, what, what you used to and what your build is. And you actually have, you mentioned you have a 3090 at home as well, right? Yeah, and this yeah. level uses ray tracing also. So it, yeah. that already pushes yeah. your graphics card even more. Yeah. So, um, yeah. For are, you, are you sure you're sick, not secretly doing some kind of mining? No, no. And it really wouldn't be, make sense either because of the, you know, <laughs> that whole thing tanked. Uh, so, I mean, if you are looking for a graphics card in most markets, you'll, you, you'll find some pretty good deals these days. So that's, uh, yeah. it's always nice. And I can, I can remember that a lot of graphics cards nowadays have like locks on it, but I guess that yeah. we bypass them again. Yeah, I read something about it. Yeah, exactly. So that's, you know, um, yeah. what is it? Necessity or money is the mother of invention. <laughs> if people are motivated enough, they'll find a way. So anyway, but yeah. Um, this okay. runs pretty nice. But you can also see, by the way, just to share with you guys a little bit, on the top right, you can see the uh, uh, on-screen display from MSI Afterburner. We've put a couple of metrics on there, notably uh, the GPU at the, at the top, uh, so the temperature, the usage, and the clock speed. Uh, then the, the memory being mentioned there is the VRAM usage. Uh, so that's up to about eight gigs. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure how dependable that is because I've seen it in games as well that it's somehow it seems to be uh, not registering the full usage. Anyway, uh, the third line is the CPU usage. And again, this is an uh, i7 12700K. So it has, I don't even know, I'm not the CPU guy, but it has a lot of cores, right? Mm -hmm. And it has, it has performance cores and efficiency cores, uh, but it has a lot of them. Uh, we didn't want to like flood the screen with these statistics. So we, we just put the general uh, metric there. So you can see the, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the temperature again and the um, usage. Although the usage really isn't that relevant. It doesn't really say a lot because you know, a couple of the performance cores are probably screeching and uh, being utilized full, but um, other cores are probably just idling. And of course, the uh, clock speed there as well, which is nearing uh, five gigahertz, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Um, and then the overall RAM usage, so that's the DDR5. Uh, this system has got 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM so available. plenty left. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, and it's just pretty yeah. much using uh, yeah, 16 gigs at the well, moment. With all these fancy specs, if you want, I can stress it a bit more. Yeah, well, I can go, so go now ahead. it's just resolutions. I'm basically just doubling the resolution, yeah. and this is a 4K screen? Uh, yes. A full, full 4K HD screen? Yes. Which means that if I do this, 
and I make my screen a bit bigger, we are hitting around the 8K. And of course, like, it's unfair to do this to... Yeah, there's no real reason why you would do this yeah. other than to see if it can handle it. But um, uh, standing still, 13 FPS at 8K resolution in a game engine. Unoptimized? Yeah, I would almost say like if it is an optimized game, it would still hit, probably hit around 30. Yeah, yeah that, that feels accurate. Yeah. And um, even this, okay, it won't be fun to work in, <laughs> but who is working on an 8K screen yeah, <laughs> in anyway, a game engine? Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit well, like you mentioned, right? If you're, if you're working on something, and this is like actual experience working on, on big game titles, uh, yeah, you're not working at these kinds of resolutions yet. I mean, somewhere in the future it might make sense, but at the moment, uh, I guess 4K is pretty much your, your limit because that's like yeah. the in-game resolutions that are usually up to... Honestly, I'm 2560 by 1440. Oh, there you that, go. That, that's my... Uh, yeah. I, I even have a 4K screen, but hmm. I just don't like going that high up with all your UI because <laughs> not every program is good at the, no. the scaling of it. So yeah. Yeah. that's just that's my taste. But yeah, now we are back it's just normal resolution yeah and we are sitting nicely at around 40. so um i like it yeah looks cool Let's see if the chat has some interesting questions one i would like to develop something i call pixel coding where everything you will see in the game or movie won't actually be created the way you are demonstrating but instead i would program each pixel to be a certain color for the duration needed to pr produce the image required kind of like color coding or pixel color mapping that sounds very technical, yeah. uh, but cool nonetheless. I mean, if that can, if that can work, I, I guess it's a, it's a different way of, uh, you know, creating uh, images or creating, uh, yeah, creating visuals. Um, it's possible that VRAM happens so quickly that the machine can only do an average. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, there's there's always variance there, but uh, anyway. Yeah, I'm just placing some random stuff around. Just don't mind me. <laughs> I, I hypermodels, so I have to go eat french fries, <laughs> Belgian greetings. Uh, mm -hmm. Bon appétit, I guess, you know. Enjoy those french fries, man. Shuffling data mm -hmm. and doing rendering so quickly that monitoring software would have to be highly specialized to the real time. Yeah, again, it's, again, we, we just, yeah, we're just using uh, MSI Afterburner in this case, so you, you can, uh, this software you can also use. Uh, it's something that we usually use to, to display uh, performance in games or that you can also use to uh, find out indeed if you have a bottleneck in your game and you're wondering well what part of my hardware is bottlenecking or, or not being used and you know this kind of thing can help you figure out uh, while staying in the game all right what's my hardware doing and in this case uh, it's uh, it's yeah we're using it to show within the 3d render engine and this is unreal engine 5 yeah, uh, which latest version. I was going to say, it's not been out that long, has it? No, a couple of months. So yeah. the, be the beta, yeah. beta yeah. however you want to say it, yeah. has been out a bit longer. But yeah. for the rest... Uh, the final version. Yeah. Uh, but it's a big step up from Unreal Engine for new, ti yeah. new lighting systems, uh, new systems to handle polygon counts yeah. for the people that know. Well, <laughs> that's, a, yeah. that's a normal gaming term, right? Polygons? Yeah, Why although not? most people probably don't even realize this. But indeed, everything, basically everything in the game world is built up out of polygons just means it's like a, a wireframe model i think that's a, w a fair way of saying it right i can even oh there you go Ta -da. Hey. and now you can see that how much unreal can handle yes. because if i zoom out <laughs> like uh, can you guys still remember the days where just everything is blocky and now it's just millions upon millions oh, just, of just look at if you look at like the dome there, that like big wireframe, right? There you can easily see like, okay, individual lines and all right, so yeah. there, that's a, like a rough surface. Here it's, it's just like a, a, a mesh of, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's too difficult to see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we also here have like some detail lighting, which is basically just some lighting modes, which is, so it look, I like this look because like grayscale with like shadows. I, I thought it, I thought you made it snow, like it's winter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, like it's, it's just snow stuff. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we have a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I won't really go over some really freaky stuff also, oh. which is just like reflections. Oh, oh. real-time reflections and all that stuff is all what? included here. But uh, all right, yeah, it's uh, a bit over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, but there's a lot of cool stuff. But again, yeah, if, if any of you guys are looking into doing this kind of stuff, I guess by playing around, you learn a lot just by by. All right, what does this do? Uh, what does this do? And then just yeah, and you don't start forget figuring like it out. Unreal Engine is free for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So you can. And there are so many assets because Unreal Engine, they are really about the community, so they give out a lot of free stuff. So literally, you can go to YouTube and within probably a week or two, you can 
also just place around models and everything, get, see making the models, yeah. that's where the skill comes in. Yeah. But just placing them, well, I shouldn't say that because there are little <laughs> professions about placing the models. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, like yeah. it requires skill, but it doesn't take yeah. as long to learn because. No, I mean, anybody yeah. can, can make something, but to make it look, you know, kind of semi-realistic or somewhat, because to create immersion and in games, like you need to create something that is somewhat believable, I guess, that, that feels natural uh, to a degree. Uh, even though maybe uh, <laughs> it's you had a crash? No, no, not oh. crashing. It just okay. I did something I did not like. All right, well, so give it a second. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so um, <laughs> but yeah, you, you need to create, and, and that I think requires uh, practice and knowing what you're doing. I mean, anybody can just stack a couple of assets onto each other and, and, and create something. You know, a first first thing. But to create something that when you're walking around in it feels like. You know, you, you feel immersed in it, and, and you kind of get get into the the scenery and the story. That that's a special uh, art form, and that's something that uh, exactly. I mean, you, you either have to learn, or you just you know, some people might just have that talent or just know how yeah, to but do that. It's but still, for most people, it's just experience. Yeah. It's just. Uh, you yeah. just need to grind and keep practicing and practicing and then it starts to look better and better. Of course, it's really beneficial if you know about like, okay, how is something constructed? Uh, how does light and color work? It's same yeah. as painting. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. if you just pick up a brush, <laughs> yeah, you will Anybody probably Anybody can put, can put a, a couple of stuff and a couple of colors or streaks on, on, uh, on paper indeed. But yeah, to definitely. create an actual masterpiece or something that resembles, you know, a scenery or, or, or something realistic or a person or whatever you're trying to paint, yeah, that that's a whole lot more difficult. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, it's exactly. a, that's a good analogy. So, yeah, but uh, it's fun. Yeah, at least uh, if you have the feel for it, it's fun to do. Learning new stuff, like you actually get excited and you find yourself at 12 a.m. <laughs> p.m. I don't know. Uh, what, let's say 1 a.m. That's yeah. easier to say. Yeah. Uh, still working, and then you look at the clock, and it's like, oh god. Like it's yeah. same as gaming. Like yeah. you just. I just I just want to add yeah. one more thing, and then before you know, it's like, oh, the sun's yeah. coming up. Oh crap. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but it makes yeah basically common sense. Yeah, I guess. But yeah, I mean that's that's the thing, right? If if you're into this kind of thing, it becomes addicting. I can imagine that because the more you create, uh, and it just yeah. Yeah. But this tool is amazing. You, the way that you're, you know, yeah, you're you can see like, trees. <laughs> like you can see that it's not that difficult what I'm doing. I'm, I'm pressing some parts. Yeah, yeah. Once you know the buttons, I'm just like placing some trees. Yeah. And then, for example, I say like, okay, I want some grass. So I have like made some grass, mm. and I can just go in here and like, mm. ta 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 here. But this like, is really down to the tool as well, right? So I guess yeah, uh, previous tools yeah. probably weren't quite mm. as good at this. It required a lot more work to, oh, to get yeah, this kind yeah. of result. Like right? I've worked from everything from engines that are 10 years old mm. that did not even have a real time that you can see this. Oof. Like uh, you could literally just see. It's like, like working in the matrix. You're just yeah, it was on like code. the only <laughs> thing that you could see was the wireframe. Okay. And then like gray, so it's almost like this combined with wireframe, and that was it. Huh. And um, but I've also worked in engines that are honestly even better than Unreal Engine. Uh, but those are Ubisoft in-house engines. Mm -hmm. No one can unfortunately get them. I wish I could well, have them because they are really. So there are some used. trade secrets still, right? I mean. Yeah, so yeah. But uh, even those engines, uh, oh. the development of those things, it's. Insane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Insane. But I mean, it's uh, as you mentioned, right? It's it's a multi-billion, trillion, whatever dollar industry. So yeah, I mean, as more money goes into it, you can imagine things get more uh, complex. Uh, they have more money available to develop tools specifically for uh, certain studios or certain games, even. So yeah, then it becomes a bit more. Uh, yeah, definitely. Detailed. So it, it's all about because that's what, like, of course, we want gameplay to be good. Yeah. But you do notice that lately with all this new hardware, gamers really are focused on graphics, the most of them. Yeah. Previously, when you did not have all this hardware, oh, the only thing that you could do was have good gameplay yes. and uh, have good story and everything. Like, yeah. I still like that. My favorite games are I The Last of Us and yeah. Uncharted. And uh, I like the in old way, The Last of Us more. In a way, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> in a way, it's a bit of a shame because it, 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 there was a point, and maybe we're moving back a little bit in some games at least towards, or maybe a, like an equilibrium or, or a bit of a balance, but... Uh, indeed, like there was a point I remember as well that I was kind of like, w when new games came out, it was only pretty much about the the, the, the visuals, but the stories themselves and stuff like they, they were like on a back seat, and it was kind of disappointing in a way. I, I can still remember that some of those games they came out and I was like, yeah, oh look at that, you know those visuals, and then once you once you're you've seen the visuals and and okay, 
so what's the story like? And then it's like, well, yeah, there's a story, but nah, you know, <laughs> meh. They yeah, clearly exactly. didn't spend that much time on it, or at least, no. you know, so it took a back seat, and that was a bit of a shame, but... Yeah, yeah but still, of course, I'm a visual-based, yeah. so for me, yeah. uh, I love my stories, but if a game looks really bad, it's harder for me to actually play it. Yeah, well, yeah, because you... you well, that's the thing, right? You are looking into that and, and looking at those things specifically, so probably, if you see in a game, I mean... You know, if you see uh, maybe like a, a gap or somebody made a mistake in a texture or whatever, and you'll be likely to see that and be like, oh. Yeah, pretty much. Even on games like I walk. Because you're trained to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I walk around games and I'm just walking around. I'm like, oh, why do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> just like yeah. the small balls there. And yeah, uh, Brian does that, says... To be fair, does that ruin games for you to a degree? Or, or are you still able to kind of turn that off and just enjoy the, the oh, game no, as it is? I can turn it off and for me it's more I understand. Mm, like, right. you do notice when they just did not pay attention. Mm, like, mm. Uh, but then you can understand maybe they had a deadline. Maybe it was just <laughs> like, yeah, sure. like, it happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. or they, made, they had to make some compromise or maybe some oversights. Again, you know, nobody's perfect and, and there are always... Uh, uh, sorry, um, yeah, people can make mistakes. And the, the nice thing about games these days is uh, that uh, even if there are mistakes in the game, they can be patched out, right? I mean, in the old days, what you were talking about as well, a game was as is. You bought it, it was on a, a disc or a, you know, a DVD or whatever, and that's it. It yeah. didn't get any updates. If it, if it had bugs or errors, they were in forever. Like, they, yeah. were, they would not be fixed. And these days, it's just they, they bring out the game. And I think maybe that's also why... I mean, the games have become way more complex and big, so it's already way easier to have some mistakes that you didn't see or didn't catch because it's just so much content it's almost impossible to, to, to catch everything yeah. you would need multiple years probably of debugging before you <laughs> you can release the game so it's probably easier at some point to say all right this is more than good enough and you know anything we catch from this point onwards will address afterwards in patches and that's probably what you see happening a lot yeah and then you have cyberpunk which yeah uh, yeah that was a big one Oof. Like, yeah. like i i believe for cyberpunk it was as i said before deadlines yeah like um yeah. there is a point where because a game you can keep working on it for 10 years if yeah, you really yeah. want to and it will yeah. never be good yeah. enough no but um we also know that gamers are yeah. a little bit impatient sometimes they are they <laughs> are <laughs> yeah. so that's the thing but on the other hand i mean it's always a, again it's also a bit of a balance right it's like you want the game to be good but you also want to be able to play it right now if possible yeah, that's yeah. Like, you know it's hard sometimes it is a hard balance yeah. and yeah brian i was talking about snowdrop oh. when i said about that go. engine yeah. that was that i wish i could use but uh, wdk you also have a lot of uh, comments about it and you you do say a lot about you know ue4 so it's kind of hideous and then uh, improvements to t does e uh, unreal engine 5 have any improvements to ta do you work with these things do you have any experience with it because it does sound like it so that would be interesting to know yeah but i i get what he means mm -hmm. uh, when they when he talks about default it just means that uh, they don't really tweak any of the settings that yep. make it look good. They just they drop it into Unreal Engine 4 yeah. and they just say, done. Yeah, yeah and that's exactly. It. But uh, the trick is to actually tweak your settings to get mm. the highest quality. Yeah, to yeah. get the highest quality. Mm -hmm. um, that's in relation to its TAA. What was TAA? Because there are so many uh, acronyms. Do you mean the anti aliasing? Uh, yes, I think, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, temporal anti aliasing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they have like four methods. Uh, it's all the classics. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry if you uh, hear worry. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Without knowing it, I'm just tapping on my microphone here. So, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah. So, Unreal Engine. It's a game engine that supports everything from PlayStation 5 for PC. Mm. So you get all those fancy names that you see in your games. They are supported with Unreal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also a question there do you add moving parts at the end like a tree in the wind i'm not sure is it like a tree in the wind is that something you add or is is like you, you just place the trees and you can say all right now i want a wind from this direction mm. with this speed and and uh, it just reacts to it that stuff is very technical hmm. uh, that's that's so technical that i personally uh, well i can do it with a lot of effort but mm. i would not do that in the game industry you have technical artists we are environment artists mm. technical artists are the guys that can also do programming and everything right but right. they can also do art mm. and those guys they can program that oh wait because i see, see a little bit of movement. yeah like the trees are, are gently swaying a little bit it seems and even yeah. the grass when you zoomed in there was also there was some movement there but i guess that's just like standard like default settings or something in the in yeah the pretty engine. much like in right. the trees yeah. like i will say 
uh, the foliage here I did not create myself. Mm. This is just a time saver. Yeah. Uh, you do this as an artist. Uh, this is actually made for MSI. That's why mm. we have the massive <laughs> MSI logo, logo yeah. <laughs> just sitting here. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so this was made for MSI. And MSI does not care if I make the trees myself or if I get no. it. They just want a pretty picture. Yeah. Like it's not like they need the tree models <laughs> after. Yeah. So sometimes I just grab like the buildings I did make. And of course, I should say I made this in 10 minutes. Mm. Uh, if you actually spent a little bit more time on it. How, how much time did you did it take to create this whole thing? I already completely messed up the lighting. Sorry. Uh. Um, creating this whole thing. 50, 60 hours. 50, si there you go. So it's so, uh, one and a half work weeks. And, and that much. was without me making everything. That was me just making the buildings and setting everything up in Unreal. But I did not create the rocks. I did not create the foliage. Hmm. Uh, did you place the rocks in the foliage? Or oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I placed everything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have it here. So you got basically some assets uh, that they said, here, this is what you can use. Yeah, I think I actually made this for you guys. Uh, final delivery, making off. I think it yeah. was this. Yeah, there's one. actually a, there's a video on uh, on YouTube indeed. We can link to that later on in the description. But yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if I go where, back, where you actually s indeed talk a little bit about how you create this and uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So literally, of course, the reason I have this is because I forgot to take a screenshot. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. So this is like the start, just background buildings, yeah. and then I start adding the rocks, the buildings, composition, yeah. foliage. Uh, colors, and then you can see that at this point, Nvidia gave me some feedback. Um, <laughs> waiting now, ah. and you can see like, okay, they want to change the buildings. I change them up a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's a really fast video, but yeah, then you get that kind of stuff. And if you want to see like Specific how I actually building. create the buildings, yeah. it's of course just like a quick time lapse. But you can just see that I'm just. These are easy, like mm. they were cubes. It's yeah. not the most complex. Yeah, not the most detailed. Model. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it is still fun to make, and then you can see that you can slowly create the building. Yeah, make a 3D model. Yeah, and then you can start adding like some extra details and yeah. texturing for the bunch of UV unwrapping, but I will not do that kind of <laughs> terms in no. here. Yeah. And then just like that, you have a building. Yeah. Just like that. Well, that was still two hours. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, like. There you go. Yeah. It might look like just like that, but yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. But it's really cool to see it. I mean, uh, and there's that's just goes to show how much work that goes into, you know, if you're walking around in a game, and you're seeing a landscape, and you know, especially if it if it looks really detailed and it's it's like it really sucks you in. That's really impressive, uh, and it just goes to show how many how much time goes into it, and that, you know, it, it required somebody with a vision because they created it out of nothing, right? It's like oh yeah, you, like you I can use things for reference indeed. You have said that as well before. Like you know, sometimes you have something on a monitor to say like, right, I'm trying to kind of recreate this kind of building or this kind of texture or whatever, and then you can try and recreate that. But sometimes it's just something that you just think up and it's like, okay, I have this in my head and I'm now going to create it. And you just create it out of nothing. Yeah, definitely. Like this, I can remember MSI came to me and they said, center building with logo, uh, planet, <laughs> go nuts. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. So I, of course, go to them. Do you want a snow planet? Do you want yeah, yeah. May maybe something? And in the end, they were like, okay, let's do desert. And I'm like, Perfect. Leave it to me. Yeah. And um, <laughs> like, excuse me. Have you ever heard of Mars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Go for it. <laughs> like, I need some reference. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, for the rest, uh, I like to call this just bullshitting. Like, I just made my way. Yeah. I just kind of like made some random stuff up. Yeah. And if it works, it's fine. If it doesn't work, I delete it. Yeah. And I keep going. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. And that's most time how you work. And then it's just like, okay, we want some trees now. It's a planet. Of course, <laughs> if I have trees, I would need atmosphere. So yeah. I just place like a big dome. Yeah. Yeah. And if, as long as you think logically in art, you can get there. Like just think about like, okay, how would the trees? And then of course you can divert from it because yeah. you're an artist. You can. It's almost like playing God in a, in yeah. a little way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. You can create your own vision indeed and how you think it should look. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is this was the MSI uh, world of the project that you showed. You also had a, another one that was uh, like a, a cave. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm but that sure one uh, we it's need to turn off. Uh, yes, that one did afterburner. crash uh, indeed when uh, when we had afterburner on. So we're going to turn that off for a second. And I'll show you another one, and then I'll show you how because long I spent on that. Exactly, because <laughs> this this MSI world was it was. It was fairly large, but it wasn't the most detailed or, you know, it wasn't the biggest one. The, the one that you're going to show now, you, you mentioned that was more also um, 
this was, it was unoptimized, right? It was purely for, it could be used for eye candy. Yeah. And like a much. single frame or, or a rendered video. Yeah, so this one was like me loving The Last of Us. Mm. And I needed something for my portfolio. So I was like, because you, as an artist, you need to keep up your portfolio. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, I want to make this. Now, I still had limited time because <laughs> you will notice it when you become, it's always such a cliche to say professional artist, but yeah, <laughs> when you are a professional artist, you don't have a lot of time anymore, but no. still this environment took me around 100 to 150 hours. But the trick is I made everything. Hmm. Every single model, so, pixel, so no, texture you see. So no uh, stock uh, things, no. like textures or anything used? No, 100% right. myself. Wow. Uh, everything from textures to the models, to the foliage, to uh, because that's the thing for portfolio. You need to see the show yes. that you can do it. Yeah. And uh, you can see that now I'm running it at 150 resolution. And let's do FPS and it's still running 20 to 30, which I expect for this. Normally I would yeah. go for like 100 with this scene. Because also you mentioned this is unoptimized, right? This is uh, yeah. not really meant as a game to walk through or to provide a yeah, smooth experience. There's nothing there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's more like the models themselves are optimized because of portfolio. But if you if I press G, you can see how many lights I have. Mm. Every This thing means a light. Yeah. And you can just see that I just threw in everything. And for the people that know art, lights are expensive to render in games. Yeah. <laughs> really expensive. Especially in, in, uh, with ray tracing. Yeah. And yeah. also textures. We all know that textures, like I just went 4K textures. Like everything 4K, just yeah. leave it nice yeah. and high. Just yeah. yeah, you don't get that in games. Usually you have uh, as an option, uh, you know, HD texture packs, but then you're usually talking about uh, full HD textures. Yeah. In terms of resolution, mm -hmm. this is, you know, 4K, that's, they, they don't use that in games yet mm -hmm. uh, because it's just computationally way too expensive. Yeah, most if you most people's system would just roll over and die if you do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like if you do this on like a 1060 or something or even like a 3060, you will sitting around 50 FPS. Like yeah. it will yeah. not work on lower hardware, but that's where I can cheat a little bit when I have higher uh, standards yeah. in hardware. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if we want, we can try to render out a resolution and see how high it can go. Yeah. My PC can go two to three and then it crashes. And that's a size multiplier. So that means yeah. uh, the current resolution times two. this number. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's just to get like really high. So if I go like this, we are sitting at around 3.5K now. Mm -hmm. So let's try two. Render. And now it freezes. Okay, two it can do. Let's try three. And just to, yeah, now, Ooh, now it starts. Large multipliers may cause the graphics driver to crash. Yeah. Well, we um, can risk it. I, I think mean, this one is already 6K resolution that we have now. So we just rendered out a 6K image. And there wasn't even a loading yeah, screen Yeah, so this that. is like 12, so, uh, you can do it. Let's, give it. let's give it a second. Okay, okay. And if it goes one more, then I'm sad because Ooh. it means that this small thing is better than my PC. <laughs> So let's try one more, yeah, uh, but that's like 30K resolution, yeah. that, that would be... I mean, you, you wouldn't even have a use for that, pretty much. No, no. Other than, I don't know, pr printing, yeah, yeah. printing on a building or something. <laughs> Is it actually doing it? I don't know, it, it looks like it's like kind of like a, a loading... Uh, yeah, it just freezes. It, like but it didn't... It didn't wow, it actually... Okay. There you go. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so, so this is this is a genuine <laughs> reaction here, guys, right? This guy is impressed. And this is not something that we scripted or anything. We didn't did even test this before. No, no, this is a 100 MB image and we reached 13K. Okay, 13K, so we're not at 30, but like... I mean, yeah, start zooming in. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, there's fog. There's oh, fog, okay, which okay, makes okay, it look okay. a little bit blurry. But um, if I would make it hyper sharp, it's just because I didn't do that. Like here, you can see it's a bit... That yeah. if you go back, okay. But I mean, there's no, you know, in terms of pixelation or something, there's no. No, no, like it's, it's just yeah. spot on. Yeah. Uh, just for the fun of it. I mean, it's not a vector image, but. No. <laughs> Too large. Yeah. Ah. At this at this point, it just uh, it it says like, nope. I, yeah, <laughs> like I'm not going to do that. Fair enough. Uh, honestly, it should maybe maybe ask you saying, what exactly are you going to use that for? <laughs> yeah. Because. <laughs> no. no, but honestly, like at this yeah. point, I should kind of just buy this PC because it's better than my <laughs> own PC. So, well, there you go. Oh man, and I just got a new graphics card also. But hmm. I mean, those things barely use value at this point. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, 
but this is what these things can do and, and what they're for. So, uh, what games did you develop again? He, he doesn't really develop games themselves. And in a game, there are a lot of things to develop. So, there's coding, there's, uh, you know... So, Michiel does uh, uh, yeah. mm. artwork and environment design, I guess. Emil. What's okay? Oh. <laughs> Not Michiel. See, I, I, sorry. He likes to... Uh, <laughs> no, it's just in my head, there's like, you know, my colleague Michiel, I'm used to saying his name a lot, and uh, it's just locked in my head. Anyway. Ah, it's fine. I honestly don't care. <laughs> sorry. I, I don't like it when people mis misspeak my name or mispronounce mm -hmm. it. So, um, uh, anyway, I'm going to try my best. So, yeah, Emil uh, is, uh, I think, what was it? Uh, environment... Artist is yeah, also Yeah, just they called me a Tweedy environment artist. And environment just stands for the worlds, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, Worlds or levels or whatever you want to yeah, call it. pretty much. If I go here. Now, this so, one, so I this did this is make. a different program, right? So you, before you were, yes. you were uh, in uh, Unreal Engine 5. And this is a completely different program. Yeah, so this program is called Marmoset. It's a little bit more specialized. Um, it's more about like uh, rendering out individual models. It's really heavily reliant on GPU and CPU both, which mm -hmm. is why I chose it. Um, you can also like it f has full on ray tracing turned on. You can see here ray tracing, and this is not your game ray tracing. This is like high end, high end, just push as much as you want in it. Yeah. Type of ray tracing, yeah. Yeah. highest quality. Yeah. Again, for for eye candy, for for uh, rendering single frame shots or yeah. uh, uh, maybe some short video sequences or something like that. Yeah, you can also see, like, if I now go ahead and switch to another one, you can see a little loading. Well, I don't know if people can see it. Yeah. But uh, you can yes. see the ray tracing. You can see it slowly It's also working. like denoising, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. One and of then the now it does denoise. Tick. Ah, oh, close. Come on. There yes. you go. Ah. There you go. So um, now I did not create a character. It's for yeah. a tutorial course that I'm working on. But uh, hey, it's not an anime character. Yeah. It's going to be a realistic character. But... Um, <laughs> This character, the goal is this is 30 million polis. 30 to million give you a, yeah, to give you a sense. <laughs> uh, what is what is like typically like for example I don't know maybe the Division Two or something like a, a game title that probably a lot of people have seen. What is a typical polygon count for a character? You in Division Two you probably never load in more than three to five million, and that's uh, this game is optimized for it. And that's in, on a character, or is that like in any given scene? Entire environment. So Just that's the whole world and any character yeah. in it as well. Yeah. Now, don't quote me on it, because mm, I know okay. that I would be representing Ubisoft if I say it. No, okay. But it's just to give some kind of like, yeah. okay, what, what is kind of like, because this will probably scale with, in the future, if more powerful hardware, probably, you know, they will use higher polygon count, because in the end, yeah. you want to use as high as possible, because that means it's more detailed more realistic looking, yeah. but still, uh, it, it comes at a, at a computational cost. So if you up the polygon count, means your FPS is going to tank. Yeah, so like Simple right now we are rendering five times more polys than an entire world in a video game. Yeah. Just to give on you a, like... On, on a character. On yeah. a character. To like, I can even, I can switch the wireframe, but it would be nonsense. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's the, just, yeah, there are so many, it's just, yeah. it becomes like... Pfft, Opaque. Yeah, like you like. Can I, you zoom uh, in to to a degree where you may, might be able to? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm starting to see something. Yeah, but even but the program now is like, oh my god, do I need to render? Yeah. yeah. So Every like to give you some strands and then and wire. Yeah. So like this stuff. It's ridiculous. It, it would be useless to. Yeah. Oh, I have a depth of field. That's why. Ah. But yeah, uh, with this one you can also you can go for like a long render, and I can go down here and. Well, we tried it before, but let's try it again. Let, do, shall we go higher resolution? Like yeah, eight, yeah. 8K resolution, why not? What, what I told you before as well yesterday when we were testing a little bit, and I uh, just said, what, what, friggin', you know, stretch its legs, uh, see, see what it can do. <laughs> and uh, if you make it 70. crash, then all right, then we've kind of found maybe a limit, but. Yeah, but um, it, it will not crash, it will just take a bit longer. Oh, there you go. But uh, it's even like. The length that it takes, if I now just go ahead and do one more thing and then I will press render. Just throw it on my desktop like mm -hmm. I always do. <laughs> render image. So the length that it takes does also matter yeah. compared to the hardware. Um, when I started, I had like a 1060, yeah. I believe. So like quite low and I don't even know a GPU, like not an expensive But at one. that time, probably the 10 series was the latest. Oh, uh, I, uh, honestly, I'm still talking like two years ago. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. so it's... Okay. Uh, then I the twin series are already out. You, you were missing out on the RTX. Yeah, no. pretty much. <laughs> but so fair enough. Yeah, that, that, I mean the 1060 is one of the uh, most used 
GPUs in uh, today still, I think, in uh, Steam hardware survey. So. Yeah, so like it is a solid GPU, yeah. but if rendering out an 8K image, it will yeah. not crash. But I will just walk away, take a break, get some food. Oh, like that. maybe take, uh, get a good night's sleep and then. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> it, will take, <laughs> it will take five and ten minutes, but now we are rendering right. 8K and we are one minute in or something and it's yeah. like water, which for me is impressive. I know it's hard. Maybe for people that are just gamers to yeah. actually because see you're it. expecting things to be instant, right? And yeah, to go, yeah, yeah. But for me, I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh my fucking god, that's sorry. Fast. <laughs> like, no, that's this is, uh, like I mentioned, it's fine. We we don't bleep things, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's it's fast, and I mean that's saying something. Uh, and again, it's not. It, it's it's a combination. It's the sum of the hardware you put in, of course. But it also needs to work uh, in a way that makes sense. And so there's there's drivers optimized, for example. So in this case, also the NVIDIA uh, Studio drivers that are uh, pre-installed on systems like this. Uh, but also, even our MSI center is kind of helping a little bit in prioritizing the system resources in a way that the render program has uh, first dibs on on system resources and it doesn't get interrupted by. Windows update or by you know anything else running in the background, uh, even a, a virus scanner or something. Because actually, uh, Eric told me uh, deinstall everything on there. But if you uh, yeah, if you you can click on the on the right bottom there to the, the show what else. There's a there's a Windows uh, update actually. Well, it's queued now, but uh, and I think there's still yeah, the middle one. Northern Security is still on there, so yeah. Uh, uh, potentially, that's that, you know that's still running as well in the background, but uh, it's not really slowing it down. Maybe it is slowing it down a bit. I don't know. So it could be even faster. But even with that, everything like that running in the background, it's yeah. And uh, I feel like you fast. would expect those programs to run on almost any PC, like a, yeah. a virus scan. Yeah. Like uh, we kind of need to take that into account. Yeah. And um, while it is rendering, shall we do another giveaway? Because we still have uh, yeah. Yeah. a few to go. Yeah, yeah, sure. Figure like since we're waiting anyway, it's yeah, 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 perfect yeah. timing. Yeah, yeah. Either that or get some coffee, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be a bit mean for the people watching. Well, Just yeah. an empty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, guys, you can. Um, yeah, I'll leave this on the screen by the way, so you guys can still see the rendering pro process. It's um, done. Oh. Right, then we need to hurry up. So uh, I will draw the next six winners. Oh, I'm not in a rush. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. System is still drawing. Probably this this render will be completed before the winners are drawn. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> it just it just. Uh, Race against time. Yeah, exactly. It just finished. So uh, the next six winners are. Uh, oh, this is really a challenge. Queros, Queros, Q W E Rose. Congratulations. Um, second winner is Sticky. Yeah, that's an easy name. There you go, Sticky. <laughs> uh, the third winner is called Ankur. The fourth winner is called Red Barum. Not Red Baron, but Red Barum with an M. Um, the fifth winner is called Midi Big M. Midi Big yeah. M. There you go. And uh, the uh, sixth and final winner for this giveaway is called JD. The reason I'm watching over is because I can see Ankur in the actual chat saying, say my name. And like seconds later, you said his name. So just like perfect. Yeah, there you go. Like, <laughs> <perfect irony. laughs> I, I love it when that happens because, you know, there are also a lot of people who join the giveaway and then just probably you know, tune out of the stream. So I really like it when some of the more active people in the chat uh, and we can actually see the reaction when they win. So, uh, yeah, congratulations, Ankur. <laughs> Hope you enjoy uh, your copy of the game uh, Rainbow Six Extraction. Again, it's really. Uh, if you watch stream more, that we uh, more often, we've uh, we've actually played that game on stream a, a few couple of times. It's challenging, but it's fun. So, uh, oh, a kiss from India. Thanks, man. I'll take it. Uh, well, like I said, congratulations. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, uh, we'll send that. We'll send those out to you as soon as possible uh, later on this week. Okay. So don't hate me. I had not out the wrong image. Oh, <laughs> oh. So you have to do it again. All right. Well. Well, Doesn't matter. it's not like a lost. Uh, I think I can even. Oh God! When it's rendering, you cannot really go back. Yeah. How do I go to desktop again? There's like this button. Uh, there used to be, but yeah, you can. Yeah, you it, just it's annoying this program. I I know how to do it on my PC. That's why. That's why I don't usually save stuff on, on the desktop. Because <laughs> you can still. Yeah. Now, if you go to uh, uh, like the uh, yeah that the browse thing, just open I, one, and then there's one yeah. that says desktop. That should be. Uh, uh, I, but the thing is, I want to go to my trash can because I actually rented oh. out an image previously. And, uh, but uh, yeah. you know, it's annoying because yeah. you cannot <laughs> do that on. Yeah. Uh, two of those Perfect. cards in SLI improves the performance or doesn't work properly. Uh, uh, SLI is kind of dead. 
in a way? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, for rendering, this may be a good question for you. Are there still systems or people that you know that use systems with multiple graphics cards to, to enhance or speed up rendering? Yeah, but it's more for movie rendering and then we are talking. Hmm. Uh, nowadays, you actually have render farms just. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. like, you don't see that. It's more like a that, server type thing. Yeah, you don't, you don't see that on, like, sitting on someone's desktop. No. I do see some people sometimes posting online, oh, I got two 3090s. And they're yeah. like, how often are you going to use it? N not okay. often. Very occasionally. Yeah. But uh, the big companies, they have. Just yeah. a rows of servers yeah. with uh, hundreds of graphics cards in it. Well, you can imagine. I mean, you, you're your own company, and I mean, for you, this this kind of system makes sense. But if you're talking yeah. indeed like a, a Ubisoft, for example, or any kind of big studio that uh, has a huge amount of money invested in stuff like that, they also they probably don't want their designers to kind of uh, uh, sit around and wait for things to render. So for them, it probably makes sense to have indeed like a render farm, like a supercomputer almost, that they can just say, look, you just input this into the system, and two seconds later, you've got the result, right? Yeah, Instant yeah. almost. But also even talking about data, um, Ubisoft is not going to hang on with the two terabyte no. SSD. Like we have a dire server, so everything is in the cloud. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. we use special programs, yeah. and we are talking about, I don't know, 100 plus terabytes just for one yeah. project. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. Yeah. Because that's what you get when you have 300 people working on it creating together. Creating data, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's all like you mentioned, a lot of raw data, and and it's not all optimized and stuff. It's just you know everything raw. Yeah. If you so, go, uh, I don't know if I can see it on here. Uh, this character is 30 million polys. Let's see how big it is, just to right. give you a sense of raw data. Oh God, where am I? MSI, post, exports. So the well, 25 million, so that is 2.7 gigabytes, and then I have a 50 million, which is 7 gigabytes. That is one single file. Imagine going to your PS4 and trying to load in one single file that is like... <laughs> 7 gigs. Yeah, yeah that would be a long time. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to say there are games that are that size, but there are. Yeah, yeah. They're like, not the biggest games, but still. Yeah, Yeah. so, like... Uh, yeah. Just to give like some kind of context about yeah. this. Uh, Hi Demon is asking, what's the best location for your project files? Good question. Um, project files is uh, HD is often fine. I did notice that if you have your uh, Unreal project, um, because Unreal is a bit more specific, mm -hmm. it's good to have it like on the fast drive, like uh, M.2 M M even. Mm -hmm. um, but for the rest, like you have too much data. You will fit M.2s are expensive. Uh, at least if you, like two terabytes Com is nothing. To, yeah, exactly. If you're talking about raw uh, capacity, then then uh, mechanical hard drives are still, you know, bang for buck a lot cheaper, especially on the bigger capacity side. But, I mean, M.2 prices have come down quite a bit in the past oh, few okay. years. So it's it's actually not that... I mean, between, for example, an, uh, a SATA uh, SSD, I don't know, you, you know those, right? The, yeah, those yeah, two yeah. and a half uh, inch uh, guys, uh, or an M.2, that pricing actually doesn't make a whole lot of... Uh, there's not a whole big difference there in, in most cases. In some cases there is, but in a lot of cases there's not. And of course, then there's you've got Gen 3 and you've got Gen 4, and obviously the, the newer, newer generation are a bit more expensive. So crisp at 8K. There you go. I love that. Can you <laughs> can just zoom in as, as far as you can. Yeah, it's just like at this, only at this point, and I see problems. Oh, so I will yeah. just like move away from that because yeah. those are my own errors. <laughs> but yeah, at that point. Uh, and this is an 8K image, you say? Uh, yes. Or this one is uh, 5,000 by 7,680. Okay. So around 8k yeah but um yeah definitely and like at my home pc i have one m.2 which is two terabytes i have two ssds which are both two terabytes but then i just have like 10 terabytes just hd and yeah. even that i'm still struggling like mm. that's the only thing that i also worry about this one i will need to have like external storage yes. yeah because uh, my company is doing well, but not well enough to buy a those really expensive. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. much is that twenty five terabytes in like yeah. one single drive. Yeah, yeah, I've exactly. seen them, but yeah, yeah, like yeah. I cannot afford this kind of stuff. No. I'm just a guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you got cloud storage or maybe a, a, a yeah at some point maybe a NAS drive, you know, a network uh, storage device uh, that could help because then you can put like mechanical hard drives in there. And it's like you mentioned, you know, if you've got if you need to um, load some some files fast but they're not too huge, they're not like hundreds of gigs, um, then an SSD makes sense. 
but probably if you're going to work on something, you, you probably you'll just load the uh, relevant files to the SSD or something, work on them, and once you complete that project, you'll just you know yeah yeah. For example, uh, during the night or something, you, before you you close off, you just say okay, copy the files there, and then by the time you're in the morning, you, you yeah, wake up, everything's nicely. Uh, that's pretty much what I do. Yeah, uh, makes sense. And. Um, one thing that you guys can't see, but I can see, is mm. how crisp the image looks. On yeah. Like, I like it on the screen, like, the colors are accurate, and the nice thing as an artist, when you know your colors are accurate, is that even if someone comes to you saying, oh, it's too much contrast or mm. something, you're like, no, your fault. Yeah. I, yeah. I did it right. It's yeah. my, I know 100%. And this is, yeah. this is, I think, what everybody means when they say that this is the way that the, the artist intended. You know, it's like, yeah. uh, that's always what I think a lot of times what you see with uh, a lot of standards, whether it be HDR or other color things. But uh, you told me about that yesterday as well. It seems uh, like quite difficult because, I mean, imagine, right? You're, you're creating this stuff on a, on a really expensive monitor, high end, call your accuracy up the wazoo, you know, just uh, the, the best you can get. Um, and then people are watching it on their, you know, $100 budget smartphone <laughs> or whatever. And so there is, there's going to be a difference in, in viewing experience. <laughs> yeah, like e even now, I'm sure people are watching it at hundreds, different, hundreds of yep. different monitors. Yep. Uh, right now, I don't know how many viewers have, but it must be a lot. So uh, mm -mm. With, uh, the ti with the amount of monitors. Yeah. But yeah, for the rest, um, color accuracy is very important as an yeah. artist. Um, also, like, yeah, well, that's why we call it all creator series and everything. Yeah. Uh, just, it's easier to think about photography when you talk yes. about color accuracy. That's what most people think about, myself included, because that's the first thing that comes to mind. Because, like, photorealistic or, or, you know, because people that, that are working on photographs are usually, you, you've got a lot of colors and you need it to be realistic. Either that or you're working for things like print. And there it's also, it's very uh, particular. Like you want the colors to display on your screen as they would, for example, on uh, it when it's printed. But there's always a difference there because, I mean, w when you're working with print, you're working with uh, what's it called? Um, CMYK. CMYK indeed, because it's it's like you know colors being mixed together like with ink or whatever yeah. it's gonna it's gonna be used. And on a screen, it works differently. It doesn't work with ink. It it works with light. And so it blends together in a different way, and so it's usually RGB or that kind of thing. Um, so it, there, there's, it's very difficult to to get color accuracy that will actually look the way it will look on uh, print. But that's also one of the things that's uh, and and video as well. Usually you, you want things to look really good with HDR. You also want to, if you're creating content for HDR, you might also have that in games these days because there's a lot of games nowadays that also support HDR. So that's also something that factors into it. Yeah, definitely. So everything adds on to the, the viewing experience. Yeah. Could you 3D print that now? Yeah, we don't have a 3D printer here. And I'm yeah. not sure if I this is... I have one at uh, home. Technically, yes. Hmm. I'm too lazy to wait like 12 hours or 20 I was going to say, or is that a different... Can you actually use that same wireframe model and throw it into a 3D printing program? I can try. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. I, I've never owned a 3D printer I myself, so... I honestly, I've never tried it this high poly. Oh. I have a 3D printer because... Uh, I just like to like make some small stuff here yeah. and there. It's fun. Yeah. If you can make 3D art, it's fun to yeah. actually hold it in your hands. Yeah, yeah. to but, make it uh, real. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, it would be a fun challenge to see <laughs> if it can actually do that. All right, well, uh, maybe maybe a good challenge for a video uh, of your own on your on your channel. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, did you work on VR projects? The designs are too mm. different from a non-VR non project. From non-VR projects, yeah. Uh, yeah, mm. I, he's mostly talking about optimization, I think. Because uh, VR, you need to render everything twice because you, of right. course, have uh, two perspectives. Yeah. Hmm. And um, because of that, everything is op more optimized and goes in the direction of mobile. It's getting better as everything, but yeah. even mobile is getting better. Yeah. Uh, as an artist, I would not want to work on it because, as I said before, you cannot really let loose. Yeah. It's, it's more about technical, like, uh, it's cool. A lot cool. of compromise. And yeah, and like, it's cool to make something yeah. look good yeah. and optimized. Yeah. But there is a point where you're like, oh my God, I just want. Yeah, I, I know it can look so much better, but I can't just can't do it because then it would like you know the FPS would tank, and especially for VR, that's you know that's not an option because um, you get motion sickness and so there's like a, a bottom bar of FPS you need to hit, especially in VR. Um, by the way, uh, a weird seed. You say they don't answer our questions. Yeah, uh, we try to, and I think you've got a a very uh, specific question about a uh, 2022 Zephyrus laptop. 
which is not MSI, I'm afraid. So <laughs> not sure I can help you with that there. Um, but if you have micro stutter issues, uh, no thermal throttle, what you can do is you can uh, just try a general uh, driver wipe, uh, like DDU, uh, driver, display driver uninstaller. Look for that application. Just you know, wipe the drivers, uh, as in the, the display drivers, and reinstall them fresh. Could be that there's an issue there with installing new drivers. It happens. Um, but yeah, just some stuff you can try. But we, yeah, honestly, we're not really a, a tech support channel. So sorry, we, we, we're not here to answer all uh, like problem questions. But yeah. just to show you that we do, we did see your question. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we just don't really want to spend our whole live stream yeah. trying to figure out and solve problems. We, we may do a live stream when we don't have other things uh, to do and maybe do that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to read the comments. We have like a big screen here. Yeah, yeah. But uh, sometimes it's hard to keep track on yes. everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think that that covers most of it, really. Um, yeah. There's there's a couple of things left for me to do. One is giving away more codes. Of course. So uh, maybe let's do that first, and that's going to be the last round of giveaways today. So if you still want a chance to win uh, one of the game keys for a Rainbow Six Extraction. Make sure you participate now or you have put in uh, your, uh, your loyalty bonus if you have it. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of, uh, well, maybe two or three minutes and then I'll draw the last winners. <laughs> yeah, ooh, winners, everybody's waking up. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have any questions for Emil uh, still, then uh, yeah, now is the time to ask them. Um, yeah, although I have a feeling I will be back in the future. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, as I mentioned, you know, you you you've did something. You you built that world for MSI before. That was a, a, com a commissioned uh, project for our uh, notebook team, I believe. Yes, um, notebook with a really long name that I cannot remember. Bu twelve something <laughs> something creator. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> but indeed, so uh, but it's really cool, and it's cool because you you actually uh, live in in our general area. And so it's yeah, it's cool when, when we want to have uh, live streams like this and add. I mean, we can talk about it, and we, we have a lot of. I mean, you saw some slides from the info kit, and we, we always talk about yeah, creators need this, creators need that, blah 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 blah. But it's you know we are more about the hardware, and so it's really cool to have somebody that actually is doing this job and can talk about it and then display and then demonstrate how you actually use that hardware. Yeah, um, de definitely, because that's the important thing for me. Yeah. Like, I, I, I like listening to you about, like, all the details <laughs> of things, but, like, half of it just goes over my head. Yeah. I have no idea well, what Well, the same thing for, for this, right? I mean, I'm trying to understand, and it's really interesting, because I, I love uh, seeing how it comes together. But, you know, again, like, the depth of knowledge that you have and the things that you throw, throw around, like, the terms, and, and, like, oh, of course, then you do this and you do that, and then it's like, you, you lost me yet. Oh, well, it's easy, you do that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry if I go too fast, no, I no, sometimes no forget I mean, about that. <laughs> that's, that's the thing, right? I'm probably, I have the same thing when I'm talking about hardware, so, uh, but yeah. All right, yeah. I think it's time to draw the last winners. So let's go for it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So last six winners of today. To yeah. I, can, I can do the sound. Making a <laughs> yeah. Drum roll. Yes. All right. Let's scroll all the way down. We have a big list of winners today, so that's really cool. Right. So, uh, yep. Our uh, last winners are uh, the not red. Definitely not red. Uh, DC Tekken. Fongface. Rom. Sheep Y. And PLG767. Congratulations to all the winners. We will uh, make sure to send out the codes as soon as possible to you. And yeah, I hope you enjoy your copy of Rainbow Six Extraction, guys and girls. So yeah, that was pretty much it uh, for today. Um, oh, just go back to, uh, we're trying something new. Actually, we, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm now physically sitting next to Emil here and we haven't done that. Yeah, exactly. We, he can all touch right, He can see it. But yeah, <laughs> usually I would be like this and it would be, you know, my hand would be cut off here because I would be sitting somewhere else. But yeah, it's a bit of getting used to again, but uh, yeah, it's nice. I like it because else I have the idea yeah, that we I need to look somewhere else, but now I can actually look at you. Exactly, I would be around the corner. We wouldn't yeah. actually be talking to other, you yeah, couldn't look each other in the eye while talking. Feeling a bit lonely for two hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but uh, no, it's, uh, it's nice. Anyway, uh, guys, thank you a lot for joining. Uh, next week, 
Uh, I believe Eric and Michiel will be back uh, for uh, the, yeah, talking about the workstation, the new uh, WRX80 uh, for professional productivity. So kind of this, but I guess maybe on steroids. I mean, yeah, WRX is uh, really uh, high end and, and uh, pushing a lot of uh, performance there so it will be interesting so we'll show you uh, show you all about that if you have any questions about it make sure eric and michiel brian don't tell me you don't know mike you know the the, <laughs> the guy who looks younger than he is that's always on the stream here the guy who's like a walking hardware repository who knows everything um anyway they'll be here next week uh, on wednesday and uh yeah hope to see you guys then thank you for joining and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Okay. Bye.